Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing an updated governor election prediction for this month of October. Before I start, I'd like to say if you like my content, subscribe to the channel and leave a like. With all that said, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by filling out the safe states for each party, starting with the Republican Party, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, even though some inside polls have shown it to be close, I still think it's going to be a landslide for Christy Nome. Nebraska is going to be safe, so is Oklahoma. Texas could be within 10. I don't think it's going to be, though. I think Abbott's probably going to win by around 13. Arkansas is going to be safe, same with Iowa, Tennessee, Alabama, South Carolina, Ohio, also, Florida, I think, will be above 10. Ron DeSantis has a really high approval rating, and the Hurricane Ian stuff is actually going to be very good optically for him, so I do think he's going to win by more than 10. And in the Northeast, we have Vermont and New Hampshire. As for safe Democrat states, we have Hawaii, California, Colorado, Illinois, Maryland, which is a flip. New York, although it could be closer than normal, I still think it will be a larger than 10-point victory. Massachusetts, which is also a flip. Connecticut and Rhode Island. All right, with the solid states out of the way, I'm going to get into the likely Republican states, starting with Alaska. In terms of probability, Dunleavy is probably uh, the solid victor here, but the ranked choice voting system and Bill Walker, the former governor, being in the mix, maybe it could get within 10 points in the second round if there is a second round, so I'm going to call this one likely Republican for that reason. The next likely Republican state is going to be the state of Georgia. Brian Kemp is outrunning Herschel Walker in almost all polls. He's ahead by like six or seven points in the aggregate right now on Real Clear Politics. He's probably going to win this race outright. It might not even go to a runoff like the Senate race will. He's very likely going to win. Maybe this could even be by over 10 points, but right now I do think it's going to be under 10 points. Brian Kemp's definitely the favorite over Stacey Abrams. She's not even really campaigning that much every, anymore, so I do think he's going to win probably by around an eight-point margin. As for likely Democrat states, the first one's going to be the state of Minnesota. Tim Walls is ahead of Republican Scott Jensen by a lot in the polls, and it's looking like other statewide races, like the Attorney General's race in Minnesota, could go to Republicans, but Tim Walls is definitely favored here. I think he's probably going to win by around seven points, so I'm calling Minnesota likely Democrat. The next likely Democrat state is going to be the state of Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer clearly has a lead here. I don't think she's going to win by 10 or 11 points like the polls are suggesting, but I do think she's probably going to win by around six. She has the incumbency advantage. She has a fundraising advantage. Tudor Dixon, she's an okay candidate for Michigan, but she's not really doing that well in the polls. I think Gretchen Whitmer is going to win by around six points, so I'm calling this one likely Democrat. So that is all of the likely states. We're starting with 25 Republican governors and 17 Democrat governors. So now I'm going to cover the toss-up states going from west to east, starting with the state of Oregon. In the last month or so, the Republican Christine Drazen has led every single poll. And it's been narrow, but she is ahead in every poll. And that's mostly because there's a big third-party uh, share vote share from Betsy Johnson in the state. She's probably primarily taking from uh, Tina Kotek. You can just see that because Oregon's a very blue state, but the Republican is ahead. I'm going to call this one Tilt Democrat for now, even though Drazen is leading all the polling, because I think it's possible that Betsy Johnson's vote share will go down as the election grows closer, and most of those voters will probably go to Kotek. However, if they don't, and Drazen is still leading the polls going into November, I probably will flip this one. But for now, I'm calling it Tilt Democrat. Next up is the state of Nevada. Joe Lombardo has been increasing his polling lead. He's doing better than he was when I made my last video in September. He's from Clark County. He's the sheriff of Clark County. Clark County is the population center of the state, and he doesn't even need to win the county to win the state. But even if he just cuts into Sisolak's vote in that county, he will win the state and be the next governor of Nevada. I think that's what's going to happen. He's leading the polls. That's probably why he's leading the polls. Now, I'm only calling it tilt Republican because polls can overestimate Republicans in Nevada sometimes. It's one of the only states where that really happens. So I am being a little cautious here, but I do think Lombardo is going to win right now. So I'm calling Nevada tilt Republican. Next up is the state of Arizona. Carrie Lake has been consistently leading polls here by a narrow margin, and there are polls here and there that have Hobbs up, but I'm pretty confident that Carrie Lake's going to win this state, probably by around three points. She's just been leading all the polls. She has the momentum. Katie Hobbs isn't really that good of a candidate. Carrie Lake has the name recognition, and Hobbs doesn't really. And 
the Republican environment is definitely going to help her. So I do think Carrie Lake is going to win by a couple points. So I'm calling Arizona lean Republican. Next up is the state of New Mexico. Lujan Grisham has been leading almost every poll. Most of them have her leading narrowly. Some of them are wider margin. I do think this race is going to be lean Democrat for now. Ronchetti is doing pretty well for a Republican in New Mexico, and he did the same in 2020. He outperformed all expectations. I could see him outperforming expectations this time again, but right now I do think he's behind by probably three to four points, so I'm calling New Mexico lean Democrat. In the state of Kansas, Laura Kelly is doing a lot better than I thought she was going to do. She's able to come off as a moderate, and she has the incumbency advantage, and it's a lot easier for opposite party people to win in states on the governor level than on the presidential or Senate level. That's how she won in 2018. And because she has this incumbency advantage, I think she is very close to hanging on, but I do think this seat's narrowly going to flip. She's doing a lot better than I initially thought, but I do still think she's going to go down very narrowly. Next up is the state of Wisconsin. Polling in Wisconsin has gotten a lot better for Republicans through the month of September and early October. Tim Michaels is now leading the polling average, and whenever a Republican leads the polling average in Wisconsin, that generally means he's winning. Usually, Republicans outperform the polling average in Wisconsin by several points, and Tim Michaels is now leading Tony Evers in the Real Clear Politics average. So I do think he's going to narrowly win. I'm only calling it tilt for now because the governor polls ultimately ended up being fairly accurate in 2018, so I am only calling it tilt, but I could see him winning by more at the end of the day. In Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro is leading Doug Mastriano in all of the polls by a wide margin, and it's probable that they are undersampling Western Pennsylvania, where Doug Mastriano has a stronger performance, and we saw this happen in the primary, too. It was supposed to be close, but Mastriano ended up winning by like 20 points. I'm not saying he's going to win Pennsylvania. In fact, I think he's probably down by around five points right now, so I am calling Pennsylvania lean Democrat, but I do think he's going to outperform where polls have him now. The Real Clear Politics average has him down by over 10 points. I don't think that's going to happen. That's not going to happen to Pennsylvania in a red wave year. This isn't 2014. The state and the country are much more polarized. He's probably only going to win by five points, maybe less. So I am calling this state lean Democrat. Finally, we have the state of Maine. Governor Janet Mills is leading former Governor Paul LePage in the polls by a couple points. And Paul LePage does tend to outperform polling in Maine, but he only won the last couple times because it was three and four way races. He's probably going to go down this time. I think Mills is going to win re-election narrowly. I don't think it's going to be a likely D race like a lot of places have it. I think she's going to win probably by three or four. So I'm calling Maine lean Democrat. With that, I have Republicans having a net gain of one in the governorships with Republicans gaining Kansas, Wisconsin, and Nevada, and Democrats gaining Massachusetts and Maryland, resulting in 29 states being governed by Republicans and 21 states being governed by Democrats. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like and comment and subscribe. Leave a comment telling me what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.